Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about viruses and really how they work and are they even alive? As we've been talking about domains and kingdoms, have we mentioned viruses? I don't think so. And let's talk about why that is. So what really is a virus then? A virus is a microscopic set of particles that invade cells of living organisms. Notice that we called them microscopic particles and they invade cells. But did I call the virus itself a cell? No, I sure did not. It is not, 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 not a cell. Hold your horses. Uh, I thought in order to be a living thing, they had to have all eight characteristics of life, including the sea of hog razor cells. So is a virus alive? Hmm. I don't know. I don't see any cells here. I see things that kind of go in cells, but not a cell or a cell membrane. Let's keep going. What are they made of then? So a virus is going to have genetic material, sometimes DNA, sometimes RNA, sometimes both. They'll have proteins, um, and that's important. We know that's one of our macromolecule categories. It allows the genetic material to be able to enter. That part's called a capsid. Here's an example of a virus. Okay, The capsid oftentimes is this outer part. There's usually a lot of weird proteins around the outside that can help kind of stick and match up to get into another cell. Pretty weird, all right? This is the flu virus, gross, ew, flu, Ugh. okay? But again, um, I don't see any cells. So, are they alive? They have genetic material. Um, they are able to change over time. That's why I always have to get more vaccines, right? Every year I'm supposed to get that flu vaccine. But like, I don't know, I still feel weird about this. Are they alive? Do they have cells? They lack cells, so can they be alive? They can't make their own proteins. They can't use energy. I'm feeling pretty bad about this. No, they're not alive. And really, they can't even reproduce without a, another cell. So um, they, they, they can reproduce, but they can only do it inside of a host. And we're going to see that in a second. So no, 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 not alive, not a cell. So that's why they're not in the kingdoms categories. That's why we have to talk about them all by themselves. They're not alive. So let's learn about this weird reproduction and how they use living cells to make more of themselves. Kind of like zombies. It's kind of freaky. All right? And they call the infected cell the host cell. All right? So they can't reproduce without one. So there's two different types of viral reproduction or viral infections. The first type is the lytic infection. And really, the details of these next couple of slides... Um, some of them you need to know, but it's in a little bit more detail than we need to know even for honors biology. So um, first the virus attaches. Again, that's done with the protein, and it'll attach to the host cell cell membrane. Right? Notice that this guy kind of looks spidery. It's kind of cool. All right? It'll enter by in squeezing in and shooting in its genetic material. That's like this shooting in the genetic material into the host cell. And then what we can see is it's going to start to go over into here. We can see two circular sets of DNA, all right? That's kind of different than how our DNA is on our cells because, like, this is, this is uh, probably a bacterial cell, all right? Um, and since the cell can't really distinguish this is my DNA versus the DNA from the virus, guess what's going to happen next? Well, the virus is able to take over the cell's DNA replication and protein synthesis machinery, and it's going to be able to say, cell, make me virus protein. Cell, make me my DNA. And it'll make it like a factory and make more viruses. And now there's more viruses. How freaky, right? And those viruses that were just hijacked by the cell, the host's machinery, and... and and the cell's energy to make, that's why you get tired when you have a virus, they're going to just explode out and kill in the host cell, pop. If your cell membrane is popped, your, the host cell, that particular cell dies. Um, and then those viruses are now available to infect more cells. So this is when you feel gross when you have a virus. This is the actual infection or disease. What other things the virus does and how it also makes you feel is why the viruses are all slightly different. This is not good at all, okay? 
There's another type of uh, reproduction that is very similar. This is called lysogenic. It'll look the same. The virus will fuse the host and the cell's DNA. They'll actually go together. Now they're actually embedded with one another versus instead of this guy being separate. And every time the cell replicates its DNA and reproduces, right, each new cell will have the virus DNA hiding in it. But what we don't see here is we don't see any new viruses being made, and we also don't see the viruses exploding out. All right, so this does not look like an actual sick person or infection yet. However, it can switch over into the other type, and suddenly the viruses start being made, and the person starts feeling bad. So don't draw all of this, but what I do want you to see is there's a route where the virus kind of makes the person sick and there's a route that it's kind of what we would call dormant and it can become the sick version later. This is very IB biology but I think it's super cool and it's great for you guys to see how viruses reproduce. But did they reproduce on their own? No. Do they have, are they made of cells themselves? No. So are they alive? No. So let's learn a little bit about viral diseases because a lot of us are probably curious about that. So there's a lot of different examples of things that are viruses that are really oops, cool to know that these things are actually not bacterial. They're not themselves made out of um, cells. So chicken pox, the flu, HIV, AIDS, um, the common cold, measles. And what we can kind of see here is some of these things you can get vaccinated for, but some of these things we actually don't even really have ways to deal with yet, such as HIV AIDS. And that one we can talk about another time. And that one's really hard because it's a special type of virus called a retrovirus, which makes it very complicated. Um, but how do we defend ourselves against these viruses that seem to be like zombies and take over our cells? Well, vaccines are really our only defense. And the way they work is they are actually weakened or killed versions of the virus, a virus known as pathogens, the bad agent pathogen. Um, and this is how it works. So I will put a weakened version of the virus in my syringe. I know that it's not going to make the person sick. All right. And what I do is I will give it to the person and the person's immune system, which is our defense system, will learn how to make antibodies or recognize this bad guy. And anytime it sees it again, we'll be able to fight against it. But what is not true is that the actual vaccine makes us sick. The only way that would possibly happen is if there was other things other than the virus in here that keep the virus from going bad, such as sometimes there's egg residue in here and some people are allergic to egg, that can make a person sick if they have an allergy to that. Um, and so what ends up happening? So anytime my body then sees the virus, I have these good defense agents or soldiers called antibodies to fight them off and destroy them. This is really great. This is what happens, especially for things like hepatitis that you have a vaccine for when you're very young, um, and polio, which you have a vaccine for when you're very young, and other vaccines somehow we seem to have to have more often. How does that work? Why don't vaccines seem to work for quite everything? Well, this is our last slide. You almost made it. And so this is the reason why we sometimes have to get vaccines more than once. And the reason is vaccines only work against viruses where their proteins and DNA don't change a lot. So for instance, the things that we got vaccinated for when we were children, smallpox, measles, polio, they have surface proteins on the outside of the virus that don't change a lot from generation to generation. And so when we get our vaccine, our body's able to recognize them because if we are exposed to them again, it's the same exact bad guys for the soldiers to fight off. But things like the cold and the flu and even HIV AIDS, those things, they mutate a lot because of the way the virus acts. And the, that means that they, you have to get the vaccine every year. The flu shot will only pre pre prevent you from getting the most common versions of the flu for each year. And the scientists each year do their best to estimate which handful of influenza or flu viruses are likely to be the most common. But each year that'll change. So you have to get it every year. 
um, in the cold, there's so many different types that there's not even a vaccine against the common cold like there is the flu. Wonderful job, guys. The big picture is our virus is alive. No, they're not. Good job.